Okay, now let's move um, into rational inequalities. So this, we're just going to get a little bit more complicated of a problem here. Okay, the keys to remember in solving rational inequalities is number one, you have to have a single rational expression compared to zero. In this case, that's exactly what we have. We have a single rational expression here, one single fraction, and it's being compared somehow, this time it's greater than zero. So this is a must before we can begin. Now the next must, that must be before you can start, is everything, the numerator and the denominator, must be fully factored. So in this case, our numerator is completely factored. We can't do anything to it. And our denominator is completely factored. So there's nothing else we can do with that. Now what we do is we take each one of those factors and we set them equal to zero. So I'm going to take oops, x minus 4, set that equal to zero, and x plus 1, and set that equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve each one of these little mini equations. So x equals 4 and x equals negative 1. These are what we call critical values. Now I want to make one little quick note here before I get in and get too far in. I can see because this is a greater than symbol, that tells us that our endpoints will not be included. So that means that we're going to be using parentheses in um, this problem, parentheses. Let me spell that there. Okay, so I just kind of want to make a note of that before we start. Okay, now we're going to take our critical values and what we're going to do is we're going to draw a number line. And I'm going to put the critical values in. Um, let's say here's 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4 would be over here and negative 1 would be over here. The critical values are going to act sort of like separators. They're going to separate out our number line into different segments or different areas. So we're going to look to see what's going on to the left of negative 1, and then we're going to look to see what's happening between negative 1 and 4, and then um, on the right side of 4. We're going to do that by looking at each one of our factors. So our, we had a factor of um, x minus 4, and then we had a factor of x plus 1. Now I'm going to choose a number that's somewhere over here to the left of negative 1, like mm, maybe negative 2. If I were to put a negative 2 in x plus 1, negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. So all I'm interested in though is the sign. That would be a negative number. If I were to plug negative 2 into this factor of x minus 4, negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 6, so again that would be a negative number. Now I'm going to look to see what's happening between negative 1 and 4, so let me choose maybe 0, that's an easy one. If I plug a 0 into this factor, 0 plus 1, that's a positive number, a positive answer. If I plug 0 into this factor, 0 minus 4 would be a negative number. Now I'm going to try something to the right of 4, so maybe try 5. It can be anything you want. 5 plus 1 would be a positive number and 5 minus 4 would also be a positive number. Now I'm going to look to see what happens with um, those signs because remember our original problem said we're going to do x minus 4 divided by x plus 1. So if I take a negative divided by a negative that's a positive. A negative divided by a positive is negative. Positive divided by positive is positive. I want the answers that are bigger than 0 or the ones that are positive. This tells us the regions that would work in this problem. So my answer here now would be negative infinity all the way to negative 1 using parentheses joined with 4 to infinity.